So, you've learned how to grow bismuth crystals, have you? Take it to the next level and learn how to control the colors. This is the third video on bismuth that we have made, and we are by no means experts, but we do have some tips and tricks to help you take your bismuth game to the next level. But first, don't be dumb. Take all the necessary safety precautions and wear your glasses. Especially wear your glasses. We aren't going to walk you through how to grow these crystals specifically from start to finish this time because we've already done that in our previous two videos. So if you want to learn how to grow these from the beginning, just go check those out. I'll link them down in the description and probably up here somewhere as well. The first step is to grow the crystals in your melted bismuth. We are using a propane burner and a stainless steel pot. While the bismuth is melting, let's prep what we need. If you want a deep golden color to your crystals, you will need a small temperature resistant bowl filled with snow or ice. And if you're looking for blue or yellow crystals, you need a heat gun or a preheated oven at 500 to 520 degrees Fahrenheit. Be sure that it is safe to heat your oven this hot. If your oven is not rated for that kind of heat, it could melt the inside wiring of your oven. By this time, our bismuth is melted. We can start the crystals growing. We insulate the pot with a few layers of tin foil. Make sure to keep the pot completely still. Let's make this one golden yellow. You have a very small window in which you can change the final color. If you wait too long after pulling the crystals out, you will not be able to change the color at all. By selectively dipping into the snow, we can change part of the crystal's final color or all of it. Now let's reset and try to get blue and yellow. Okay, blue and yellow is more difficult to achieve than golden. Now that the bismuth is ready again, we are ready with a preheated oven. The idea is that we pull the crystal out and then immediately put it in the oven. If you don't want to preheat your oven, you can simply hold it directly over the hot bismuth. The key is to let it oxidize in a hot environment. By playing with the temperature after the crystals are out of the liquid metal, you can get any and all of the colors possible. Now let's try removing the colors completely. If you happen to have any hydrochloric acid lying around... If you have some hydrochloric acid laying around, get help! For goodness sake, put it in a safe container. I'm talking to you, Jimmy. Yes, but if you do, you can dip the crystals into the hydrochloric acid and it'll leave you with shiny silver crystals. While we look at what we have created, let me tell you why the colors change. The colors on the crystals are not pigments, they are differing thicknesses of bismuth oxide that either constructively or deconstructively interfere with light waves. The thickness of the layer of oxide is determined by how fast the crystal is cooled. The faster it cools, the thinner the layer, and if you cool it slowly, the thicker it gets. By dipping it in hydrochloric acid, we completely remove the oxide and are left with the natural color of bismuth. So cool! 
If you like what you saw, punch that like button. And stay tuned, because bloopers are coming up. Lee, wear your glasses. We are working with very hot metal. In fact, the metal is actually melted. This has the added benefit of being able to say that we work with metal before it was cool. It's hot. It's metal. No! Stop it.